Hello everyone, Lee Fried here, and today we have a pretty big book, uh, the, uh, the Greater and Lesser Worlds of Robert Flood. I think this also goes by the Microcosm Macrocosm. And so during the uh, early 1600s, he did a lot of his work. And, uh, you know, apparently pretty interesting guy. He was uh, Scottish. Um, it says in the opening here, he was one of the last Renaissance men. He did everything from medicine to mathematics to architecture, a uh, series of, of topics and tried to do everything. And, um, and so what's interesting about him and his drawings is that when you first see his drawings, you're like, oh, this is really esoteric, weird stuff. Some of them are based around religious symbolism and some of them are just simple diagrams of um, flasks and uh, operating tables and very mundane things that you would use in an everyday uh, instance in, as a medical practitioner in the 1600s. Um, but he's most known for his illustrations because he actually tries to draw a metaphorical image for these um, Kabbalah-esque um, images or uh, concepts rather. Um, he is considered to be a Christian Kabbalahist with his own twist on, on things. And so, you know, this book is kind of a collection of um, those images and also description of them. And so it actually breaks down all the esoteric imagery that you would see uh, in these images. And it's really not that difficult to comprehend if you have a understand, understanding knowledge of basic religion and themes and characters, you're like, oh, okay, this is what he's trying to uh, perceive, like he'll try to draw the the names of God or whatever, and and once you understand the context, a lot of these images make a lot of sense, actually. Um, and there's just some really uh, some really cool things in here. So if we just open up the uh, intro here. We have the a portrait of Mr. Flood here, and um, what's interesting, um, you know. Is that a lot of people may overinterpret these images and they may say, oh, what's the hidden meaning or whatever? And it's interesting that um, as a man of science and medicine and practicing all these kinds of things, um, what, what, um, oh yeah, and of course he was an alchemist. That's, that's the big, his big claim to fame is that he was an alchemist and part of that school of alchemy and Kabbalism and um, hermetics, basically. Um, it, it, the general kind of vibe I get from these guys is that they they try to are they're trying to find essentially a universal field theory. They're trying to find um, you know a universal similarity between uh, you know you study all these different areas like math and science and music whatever, and you think there's like a a a line or like a, a thread of commonality that goes through them, and so and it always leads back to God in some way and religion and you know they try to make sense of the universe. So there's nothing in these images that is like a hundred percent accurate. That's how it is. But this is all very much theorizing and and it's more so poetics in in, in visual poetics really. So so let's look into some examples here. And so there's, you know, some series where he tries to depict the uh, beginning of the world as depicted in Genesis. Uh, so yeah, so here's like one example of where the micro and microcosm themes of Hermetics and the old mystery schools, and I guess of Kabbalah, because I don't know Kabbalah that well, kind of um, exonerate itself. So you have the a human figure here, a man, and uh, you have the name of God here um, written in Hebrew in the cloud. So there's obviously, there's the Kabbalist uh, Jewish influence. And then you have all the sections of the body, and they're kind of divided into these areas of uh, the sun and uh, you know Mercury and Earth and Venus. And so the idea is that macrocosm, microcosm is that the universe is reflected within ourselves. And so it's very much a um, the hermetic tenant, tenant of as above, so below. So you would have these things where parts of the body would um, you know, be in certain alignments that, you know, certain energies, um, etc. And he would kind of use this in his, in his treatment of the kind of pseudoscience of, of yeah, the energy in, in your body is off or something. Very similar to uh, chakras, really, frankly. So, you know, there's not, it's not entirely, um, I think, misled or whatever. 
Um, but it's just very, really interesting how he has these very complex diagrams as this is like a very legit thing rather than just his theorizing. But it's it's a very interesting thing to to look at and imagine. Oh yeah, what if you know my you know my my um, uh, sun circle area is is in in, in danger and uh, I wouldn't recommend any of the medical practices that uh, you know from that time period. But you know that's where they are. Um, I guess the one thing I did come across in this book that kind of uh, I found unusual or interesting is his uh, uh, treatise on urinology. And that is, yes, the study of pee and uh, urine. And um, it was actually um, extremely uh, logical. It was just that depending on the uh, color and quality of your urine, he could um, deduct, you know, something about your health. And that in your health, which is actually, you know, true. If you have, uh, I believe, darker urine, you uh, have not eaten a lot. If you have very light urine, uh, you have drank a lot. Um, so, so yeah, there's like, you know, and again, so it's like, you know, 1600s, you're doing the best you can as an alchemist and a doctor and a mathematician and whatever. And you kind of like, hmm, there's something about this pee stuff. And I'm like, yeah, no, he's right. But uh, I'm not sure, exactly sure, you know, they're still figuring all this stuff out, right? So as far as it goes, like he was onto something and he was probably right on that. So for example, here's a picture of like a hand and he's mapped it out into the different quadrants of Saturn and Mercury and all these other things and how the cosmic universe is reflected inside man. Anyway, I could go over so many of these diagrams, but they all are so very interesting and very well done. And it's not something that I think I would take super seriously it's like this guy trying to create a universal poetic theory of like you know the that you know each um uh cosmic body has a tone and you can represent that in music or you can represent that in a human being and that the cosmic world uh lives in the here and now and so it's a mixture of uh poetic science if, if you will really so it's it's actually pretty cool in that regard and there's so many different pictures that you can look at and be like i have no idea what this is and then you read it and you're like oh, okay i can see what he's trying to do it's nothing that that's an absolute exact interpretation but it is poetic interpretation of these ideas and i mean i'll show you this one because it's really cool this is one of my favorites actually so here we have um the name of god and you know this here is like a i think this is an angel or principality that's like giving the word of god down to uh, a prophet and this one is really interesting that this is a, a very kabbalistic idea which is that as he spells out the name of god uh yahweh or whatever which you can't really pronounce because it's all consonants is that um each letter is giving a different universe and a different kind of um emanation so it's the idea that uh there are multiple universes multiple emanations and as you spell it out it creates a full picture of it and i don't know i mean i'm kind of giving you a very brief overview of what this means but um it's very cool stuff and like i'm a very very i'm a very visual person so um i don't know this is really cool stuff i really do enjoy a lot of these things and plus when you read it you're like oh okay that's what that means all these crazy images and um yeah i can't really recommend it more um, if you're interested in weird esoteric theology or sciences, this is a great book to pick up. Um, you'll probably get exposed to some new ideas. And um, yeah, it has pictures in it. And I, I really like pictures. So anyway, so that's Robert Flood, The Greater and Lesser Worlds, the Macrocosm and Microcosm. Anyway, please pick it up and enjoy it. And uh, as always... Uh, keep reading.